All right, we are recording. Hey, what's going on? Uh, this is Patrick from Asteroid Aim, and uh, today we're going to um, return to Amazon for another episode of Niche Hunter. This is a little bit different from my regular programming because uh, this is not an interview and this is not a uh, prepared uh, piece of content that I've thought through. I am going to browse Amazon and find good product ideas. Um, th this video is most relevant probably when, uh, y you know, the sooner you see it, the better, uh, because markets are always changing, uh, customer demand is always changing. So, uh, uh, let's uh, let's get into it. But but basically, um, you know, if you're if you're new to this series, I browse Amazon and come up with um, good market ideas uh, so that you can use them and sell them in your business or sell something similar or at least get the creative juices flowing, um, uh, so to speak. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll start uh, somewhere and end somewhere uh, awesome, somewhere great. We usually have a few. Uh, pretty exceptional ideas by the end of it. I will leave the ideas in the video description as well. Um, our scoring system is pretty simple. A score uh, of three is a decent idea, a score of two is a good idea, and score of one, well that's like true love. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, you know it when you see it. And um, yeah, for, there are some videos where we don't get a score of one um, on any product idea, which is tragic. Uh, I'm going to try to find a, a rated one idea, but my standards are very, very high. Uh, for that. And and also, um, I'll leave a link in the description for a new um, tool that uh, I'm coming out with, which will give you a 360 totally holistic view um, on whether a product idea is good or not based on data from Amazon, uh, hundreds of different data points. Uh, something like this does not exist uh, so far, and we are working really hard to bring it to you guys. Um, so if you want to be notified for that uh, and be on the early bird list for when it comes out and perhaps get a little bit of a discount more than other people, uh, check the link in the description. I will, uh, it'll just, um, you, you, you'll just sign up and then I'll send you an email notification when uh, that comes out. I'm super excited to share that with you guys. Uh, and so yeah, let's, uh, let's find some cool ideas that you can sell and that you can use to make a tons of money on Amazon. Uh, 2016 was actually really interesting because in 2016 um, we passed 50% of all units sold on Amazon uh, coming from third-party independent sellers, uh, FBA. So, uh, yeah. Oh, oh this, uh, this link, or this tool rather, is called Jungle Scout. Uh, there's a link to that in the description as well. Um, and... Uh, yeah, you can it just um, you can get all this information manually by clicking into each individual listing, but who has the time to do that, right? So this sort of just puts it all in one place uh, as a summary. So it's a convenient snapshot uh, of of things. Uh, usually, what I do is uh, like a uh, my method of dis product discovery is is um, is a stream of consciousness. So like I'll start here, but then we won't end at the same place. I'll click on a seller name, you know, I'll, uh, I'll look at uh, Kim Outlet, what they're doing. I'll go to their storefront. I'll run a Jungle Scout to get a, a quick um, idea of, uh, uh, nor, nor, <laughs> normally it tells us the revenue, you guys, this is, a, this is an exceptional circumstance. Uh, but but yeah, nor normally uh, I would see what what's doing well for them. So maybe uh, we want to go to this um, background uh, studio, and maybe I think these clips are better to sell on Amazon because they're smaller. This is enormous, so larger physical products uh, are problematic because of shipping fees and because of uh, storage fees. Like uh, if you have a huge product like this. Like this is nine feet, so you're like shipping basketball players uh, to an Amazon warehouse, and Amazon doesn't like that so much. They limit the amount of inventory that you can have in an Amazon FBA warehouse at one time, so it's not ideal. Uh, anyway, I'm just uh, muslin clamps. Then I'll I'll find uh, this is obviously physically smaller. Uh, it's physically smaller, and uh, so. Uh, it might be a better product, but I don't know. I'm gonna get it again a snapshot. Oh, the revenues are really being like non-cooperative today. I wonder if it's just me or uh, yeah. I wonder if it's just me or what. I'm seeing some revenues, but normally they're they're a lot more. Like they're all of them. Uh, 
Let me try some. Let me try something else just to see if it's me or Jungle Scout. I'm not. Uh, hopeful. Yeah. Okay. I guess it was just that niche. Okay. All right. Fine. Um, try it again. Redemption. Yeah. I mean, it it just can't it can't read some some niches specifically. I've noticed things in in technology, so this this might be uh, fall into that. S seems odd, but uh, okay. I can't get a I can't get a reasonable read on on the information here, so I'm I'm just going to move on along. This reminded me of something. There, yeah, these are these are huge though. You don't want to sell anything this big necessarily, unless it's super super expensive and the revenues from it could justify uh, the shipping and the. Um, and the warehousing fees, the additional warehousing fees, it's not not super great. Passport holder neck. We're gonna see shortly. And essentially, what I say every time, uh, but uh, I it bears repeating, is that uh, you want to, in general, see high projected revenues. These are obviously estimates and not 100% accurate, so take it with a grain of salt. But you want to see, on average, high high revenues and low review counts. Um, low review counts because it means that the sellers haven't been there for a long time. It means that new sellers have a chance at cracking the first page. It means that, uh, you know, these these guys may be heavily entrenched, but, you know... Uh, this is going to be you initially coming out with just four reviews. Uh, can you make a thousand a month? Um, that sort of thing. So that this is not. Uh, so so I'm primarily looking at these two columns here uh, is what I'm saying. Um, those are the most important metrics uh, to me. The other things that we would be looking at is uh, you know this price should be between fifteen and fifty dollars. Uh, less than 15 and after Amazon fees and product costs and shipping you're not making any money uh, above 50 uh, it's less of an impulse buy and the customer may want to talk to someone they may want to email you uh, you know it's, it's just less uh, the, there's a little bit more friction as price increases um, uh, yeah and, and then the rest uh, you know average monthly sales sales rank uh, is all encapsulated by this metric uh, the revenue, the projected revenue, and uh, yeah, obviously you want um, you know high revenues and low review counts overall. Uh, a 217 average on page one is a little bit higher than I would like to see. So pre you know, preferably in a dream state, you know, all these guys, and and what I would uh, score as a one, like you know, what a perfect product would be is something uh, you know small, easy to ship, something that looks like this actually, uh, you know, a lot like this, something that you can uh, you know, small, easy to ship, light, uh, easy to make. You know, but also uh, something that you can differentiate. So this has a fair amount of differentiation. Other products don't. Um, and then you know, every seller on page one is making a hundred thousand dollars. The revenue is at, like everyone wins on page one, ideally. And the guys have like zero reviews. That would be the ideal uh, proportion. And obviously, most things in real life fall, fall somewhere um, uh, at, le less than that. But uh, we can we can still work with that. Um, Oh, I wonder if men hold their passports differently than women. That would be that would be uh, controversial. <laughs> okay, I'm so glad we're seeing the revenue numbers here. I think it was just that niche uh, looks to be. Junk Scout's quite a good tool, so I, I imagine it was uh, just having having an issue pulling the data on that particular niche. Uh, I'm not super interested by any of this, to be honest. These things usually start off a little cold and then warm up as we. As we see, oh, I just saw something cool. So I'm gonna back up there. This, this looks like a Qi wireless charger. I think there's also something to be said about catching a wave. Uh, what what on earth is this stuff doing here? Yeah, so we're just gonna take a look at the wireless charger thing. That's kind of interesting. Now this does have technology and technological components in it. Uh, some people will warn against selling um, products with uh, technological components, and I say uh, that's not a hard and fast rule, uh, especially if the technology is fairly simple and the margin of error is relatively low. You could you could still swing it because you know technology in general has a, has a pretty good chance at uh, delivering a good value to the customer as long as it works. You know, 95, 99, 100 percent of the time. Uh, so what what I see when I look at this is um, 
a competitive market, right? You see the passport holder, the average review count was, you know, 200 something, 217. This is over 2000. So, you know, there's no way that you're going to swoop in and get 4000 reviews. That's just uh, uh, unrealistic. So, and are people with few reviews and high revenues, are they the norm in the page or are they the exception, uh, right? A, a wireless charger um, appears to be, or j just that keyword appears to be really just, um, really just over overdone at this point, uh, or not not amenable to a new seller. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go deeper into the niche though. I'm not done here. I think wireless charging as an idea is interesting, but it's like, well, uh, you know, can we get? Uh, is there an opening somewhere? Is there something that's a little bit less? saturated that we could look at now obviously if you compare this to what we just saw this is like you know 10 percent of the reviews that the last one had uh but also the revenues are a lot lower so that's not ideal either um you want to balance the risk and reward to entering any given market what's the downside what's the upside the downside on on the one that we just saw I'll do a little before and after for you. So the de the downside um, to something like <laughs> the downside to something like this is that you know uh, if you enter, you're probably not going to rank on page one, maybe ever, but definitely not right away. Uh, it's very competitive, and you're going to have to build up a lot of reviews over time to com compete uh, with these guys in terms of conversions. Uh, even if you have a great first photo, you have a great price, great title, whatever, um, the reviews count towards conversions pretty considerably, so you'd have to build up a review base over time, and that takes time, and you might never get there um, because these guys you know, could outspend you with promotions or whatever. So uh, that's not ideal, uh, but the reward is proportional to the risk. Like You could make like 50, 100, 200,000 uh, a month there, uh, and if you, if you look at this, you know, um, the average review count is, is like 10% of what it is in, um, in wireless chargers at, at around 200, whereas wireless chargers was 2000. But, uh, you know, you rank on page one with 10 reviews, which looks like you could do it here. Uh, but, y you know, um, your reward is smaller I in proportion. So if you're, if you're just getting started, you know, look for something like this. But th this is kind of why it's hard to find good niches, because I I'm sort of like, well, uh, I want the best of both worlds, right? I want something that I can enter and have a high reward with a low cost to entry, um, mostly because those things are undiscovered, which is why I'm here with you trying to discover them, right? Uh, that, that's that's all. Oh, okay. All right, we're going to take a, a, a sharp left turn because uh, I wanted to show you this thing that I found the other day. I was just messing around, and I found healing crystals. Looks a little silly, I know, and it is kind of silly. However... Uh, I wanted to look more into this because, uh, look, right, uh, th that's actually not bad. That's a little bit high, a little bit higher than I would like. I would like to see 100 or, or 150 perhaps. Uh, but um, look, there, there's more instances of people with double-digit reviews, but, you know, five-figure monthly revenues. Uh, so that's almost a 10,000. That is almost a 10,000. It's about halfway there. It's about a quarter. Uh, that's pretty good. That's that's really quite good. Um, let me. Okay, I'm gonna. This this just you know just makes the list so that I, I want it there for you in case you uh, want to play on some variation or you want to play around there. But uh, let me let me go let me go into something a little bit more deeply. Sh okay. Let me see if uh, if this is. The case. My thinking process here, I'll lay it out, is uh, th this is a great example of what we'd be looking for. We need to find a keyword where this is true almost all the time. Uh, less than 100 reviews and 40,000 a month. Uh, you could hang your hat on that for sure. Let's see if it's chakra stones versus healing crystals. Maybe these keywords obviously have some overlap in terms of what products Amazon would show for them in search results, but it's not necessarily... Okay, this looks better. This looks better actually. Uh, what you're looking for at a glance is single and double digit reviews and three, four, five digit paydays per month on that. So let's compare and contrast a little bit. 
So look, I'm, I'm flipping back and forth between these, right? Uh, so uh, chakra stones, uh, average price, uh, 20, 20 bucks there. Average price, uh, you know, 17. Uh, this one obviously wins. 20, the, the higher the better up until you hit 50 is, is good. Uh, obviously the, the, you know, the reviews are lower here. So you're seeing both uh, better margins and less competition. So worse margins, more competition. This is effectively a better keyword. Uh, look, looking at the revenue, um, they should really add average revenue to this uh, bar. That would make sense. Uh, but yeah, like uh, um, these are still respectable revenues. A little, probably a little bit lower than these, but still uh, respectable. And the review counts are much lower. So uh, for for a third right that you knock off 66 percent of the competition but you maintain a lot of the revenues do, uh, do you see that flipping back and forth so uh, therefore i'm giving this one a two uh, obviously it's not a one because again like true love you'll know when you see it and it's shocking when you see it um like i found one that was uh like graduation gowns and and gear around graduation stuff and and baptism gear is one that i found in an earlier niche hunter video uh, which I have a whole playlist of all the niche shutter videos and you can watch it. But yeah, like when I found that and looked at the stats for this, it was quite shocking. So uh, you'll know and you'll be shocked when you see it. Uh, so again, how we found this better niche out of this more general one is we looked at an example of uh, something that had a low review count, a high revenue uh, base. Uh, we clicked into that particular listing. So there we went. And then I looked for other keywords that... Um, uh, the, the seller was using in their listing to see if uh, this is actually their first keyword, which tells me like the seller thinks that this is a very important keyword and they are right as the competition is less and the revenues are more or less the same as uh, healing crystals. So that's, uh, that's quite good. Um, I'm going to apply a, a, a similar uh, thing here. I'll, I'll keep, yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll uh, this looks like you're trying to summon uh, a dead relative back to life just a little bit just a little bit no no harm in that really um, so again I'm gonna look at something a little bit more specific within this world that I didn't know existed and I'm gonna look at the numbers uh, I don't like this so much the revenues are low you know margins are higher but that doesn't that's not as important as, as revenues. This also looks like a grape grape candy. Uh, yeah, so 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 you look at this sort of solid wall of of ten thousand plus uh, revenues. You look at this; it's a little bit spottier, and the reviews are even higher than that. So this this is not you know an amethyst cluster is not ideal. I'm gonna see if I'm I'm missing anything else. I'm gonna look at a crystal obelisk for example. These these things. And just get it out of your head right now that it's important that you're familiar with the niche already. You can just look at the keywords that the sellers are trying to use. Uh, they've done the research already. You don't necessarily need to. You know. You know what I mean. Uh, it's it, you, you can be relatively agnostic as, as to. Oh, I just need to look up moonstone for fun. And not monstone because that's not fun. Moonstone's pretty. I kind of like the look. Uh, yeah, boho. All right, let's go boho. Let's gonna look at. So again, what we'd be looking at in boho is obviously I know this is too general a search term, but I'd be looking at an example of a seller with a low review count and a high revenue thing, and I would be searching. Uh, I'd be digging deeper into a particular keyword as relates to that listing to see if it's true, uh, in a niche that I you know had no idea about, and and that's how I find the new idea. It's not because I already uh, know that that niche exists through some sort of innate knowledge. I'm just being informed by what's already working. Um, so I'm in no way limited to my current knowledge and that, and that's why it's important to do niche hunters. And that's why it's important to keep doing niche hunters also, because these things are tend to change. Um, hmm, there's nothing, there's no, yeah, there, there's no, um, there's no keyword I can necessarily pin on this, which I don't like. Uh, like fairy lights, I could do, but obviously I've, I've seen, you know I've seen fairy lights, uh, and it's crowded. 
um, uh, okay, I'll go, I'll go, um, gold geometric. Make sure you're searching in all departments so you have a, a more accurate read on the, on the keyword there. Uh, as opposed to any particular thing, because it'll, it'll give you the best of everything. Uh, 759 and zero reviews. Good deal. Good deal. What are these? Mm, yeah, yeah, ugh. 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 On the cover rows. Yeah, there's not, there's, yeah, not, not, nothing really there. Um, I'm interested in Reiki. I, I don't know what that is, but it's, uh, Uh, looks to be uh, a meditative practice, or or uh, and also stones to facilitate the meditative practice, something like that. Ooh, the review counts are a little bit higher, and the revenues are a little bit lower than I would like. Let me see. Uh, you can also use these, click these to filter around. Uh, so that's a decent ratio, but that's a book, so not as relevant. That's also a book. You know, books are great margins if you ever want to get into books. I mean, it's Amazon set up a whole ecosystem around that. Uh, if you ever want to get out of the product life, you know, you can always do books. Uh, they can provide equal or more value than products, and the margins are better. Just saying. Uh, Let's do that. Let's do all departments in Chakra. Just uh, literally leaving no stone unturned here. Uh, okay, okay, all right. I'm looking for an outlier. A Malcolm Gladwell styled outlier here. This is obviously really bad. Like you don't you don't want to see that many reviews with 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 that little return on it. Uh, just generally speaking. Stone set, seven crystals, cool, uh, cool, cool, okay, all right, well. Uh, rose quartz, I don't think I've, I've searched that. I mean, at a certain point, you're just selling people rocks. Like, you need to sell people more than rocks. It's just like, what, 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 is, the, what is the benefit that is being delivered by these rocks? Uh, I, think, I think that's why um, chakra stones and, uh, you know, chakra crystals are, are interesting, because, you know, chakra implies a, a benefit beyond the rock. If you're just... You know, rose quartz as a keyword is is more mechanical. It's a, it's just more, it's a more of a commodity than anything. Uh, although this is not horrible, to be honest. Yeah, it's a okay. I'll give this a three, but it's it's like a a really sort of casual three. Uh, not not great, but but the revenues are are actually pretty solid across the board. Mm, the reviews are pretty high though. Mm, yeah, that just barely made a three. It's like if they, if there was like a yeah yeah, it's like a three point nine. But I mean, guys, better to have it on the list than not have it at all, because then at least you have a reference point there. Uh, okay. Um, okay, that looks interesting. Rakaposhi. Rakaposhi Yokoman. This is a thing that people may not be interested in enough. Rakaposhi, Rakaposhi. Yeah, uh, so, so this is a, an example of a keyword that doesn't have a market of its own, but you would be um, remiss to leave it out of a listing if you had a, if you were selling a Himalayan salt lamp, for example, like at least put this in your search terms, if not in your, uh, bolts and description. Um, yeah, this is more of an optimization point, which you can go to asteroidam.com to get an optimization. Uh, but yeah, it, this is not, uh, this is not a standalone keyword. It does not have enough, uh, revenue behind it. I will click into this yoga mat now. And I will look for something not overdone and not trite in the yoga space. I sort of like the idea of maybe a yoga game. Do I like that? 
It doesn't matter what I like, it matters what Amazon shoppers like. Uh, do I see mm, Yoga Rilla? <laughs> oh, that's literally Yoga Rilla. Okay. Okay. How how comfortable are you leaving your kid in the company of a yoga gorilla? I'm not a parent, but I ask you. I a I ask you. I ask you sincerely. Which of course brings us to kids exercise. Kids exercise. Okay, I'll leave it at that for now. I'll keep it general to see what's what's good and what isn't. But you can always use the suggestion bar to bring up uh, new ideas. I highly recommend that as a strategy as well. Uh, my strategy right now that I'm sort of employing is a clicking strategy. Uh, the exercise, I'm just ju you know jumping from one idea to another and and looking at you know drilling down to things that are interesting to find exceptions and then to see if the exception is the rule. But you can also do also do this. Uh, so kids. Uh, are kids rain boots, kids recliner. Uh, except the recliner is going to be enormous and really cumbersome. But I'll give it the I'll give it the time of day. Okay. Well. Do 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 do. Nothing. Nothing really. I'm just going in order of the keyboard here, like the QWERTY, the QWERTY thing. Do 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 do. Uh, yeah, this one definitely caught my eye there. Body training. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'll start our start general. I'll do a search and I'll see what's working and what isn't. These uh, potty training as a keyword, I expect to be extremely competitive. There you go. Uh, but I'm wanting to see what potty training. See, this is a great example, right? I searched a general keyword. I see what's working here. So this is an excellent uh, revenue to review ratio. If this is true. Uh, so obviously we're going to look at. Uh, you know, I'll put I'll put kids urinal there in at a three just so you have it. Uh, and but but we're going for gold here. We're not going for threes all the way down. Do do do. Ooh. Uh, well. Okay. Yeah. Great. 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 Okay. So the one that we found as the in the in the search results of potty training is um, perhaps not surprisingly the BSR is quite good. Uh, is, is the top search result for a more a more specific keyword like potty training reward chart, uh, but um, the exception in this uh, keyword is the rule in in this keyword. Uh, so. Um, Look at that, right? Obviously, this is a general keyword, lots of competition. Uh, th this is a less, uh, th this is a more niche, the potty training reward chart. By the time you get down to like a chart for this activity, the, the competition is less. But the revenues are there to a certain extent. I, th I think, um, and obviously, you know, I, I have my, you know, I've been doing this for so long that my mind just is, is trained to look for things that, make good private label products but obviously this uh, covers all the physical specs like this could be uh, made to be very very small like very physically small obviously uh, very you know very hard to screw up there's no technical components it, you know it's it's probably made of like a, a vinyl or a, like a, a whiteboard material so it won't break um, stuff like that uh, and obviously there, there's a high degree of customization that you can you can do here because you, you could you know, this is obviously this is working on some sort of star reward system. Uh, this is working on not star reward. It looks like maybe. Well, let's just take a look. Um, oh, it is okay. No, no, it works with stars. Never mind. Um, 
but yeah, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, similar idea, but there's a lot of uh, room for differentiation here. Uh, my warning here, obviously, would be that this is just at the threshold. This is a little bit low. This is lower than I would like uh, for a price point. Not great. I'll run the Jungle Scout here to see, because Jungle Scout, when you search it on a, um, uh, a product listing like this, they will actually uh, show you the results for this and also some of the uh, related items. And I'll just, I'll just see who's doing well here in this, in this neighborhood. Uh, this is obviously really good. Okay, it's that guy again. Uh, Sesame Street, uh, sticker chart. Yeah, so so this guy's doing okay. Uh, this is a small play. This is not a significant play. This is uh, the revenues are low, but the the reviews are also uh, low. But it's an easy product to execute. I'll give it a two. Gonna need to expand this out because that is a long keyword. But yeah, so we, uh, pretty good pretty good mix going here so far. Um, the train, the story of the, that's a captivating read. I've, it's really good. I've read it. Uh, yeah, prize pale. Yeah, there's maybe something, you, you'd need to think about how to differentiate, which is a product development question. Uh, but, you know, I think, uh, look at this, right? The, this is obviously just someone's project, right? Uh, you need some stars, you need an instruction thing. Uh, they did it with Velcro, which I think is probably nicer than like uh, stickers, because uh, stickers like they can get stuck on it, and they're it's a one-time thing. This is, looks like you can do it over and over again, so there's a certain like nice uh, uh, permanence to that. Uh, I feel like, well, I feel better about that from product development standpoint. Uh, yeah, so so you know, um, infinite ways to to uh, to handle that. Uh, I saw this, this sort of, uh, silicone, let's look at, something like that, I, that that's my best guess of what the keyword is, I, I don't know though, uh, silicone, silicone, that's not quite right though, uh, what would it be otherwise, though? I don't know. Obviously, sil silicone anything sells like hotcakes if hotcakes were made of silicon. Uh, yeah, this is not this is not what I'm. That's not what I'm looking for. That's a. Is that more relevant? I don't know. I've never seen this before. Looks like an interesting little invention. I don't know though. Like you're basically just taking the problem with you at that point. Uh, <laughs> I feel like it shouldn't it should be disposable. Uh uh well Am I just barking up the wrong tree at this point? That's a that's a good question. Da -da -da. Come on, ranking revenues. 44 and 21, I like that, obviously. Ah, that's a brand name, so it's not really relevant. Uh, brand name, not relevant. Uh, commode mat, that could be something. Never heard of this. That's a, that's, it goes around that. I didn't know there was even a name for that. Let's see. Huh. At fifty-four dollars, that must be pretty good margins, I imagine. But okay, so this is um this is super interesting. You don't see this as often. I'll tell you what this kind of niche is. Is a high margin, or at least high high uh, value, high high uh, revenue per transaction, low competition uh, niche with a monopoly on it. So. One seller is eating up a lot of the market share. Obviously, you have this guy, you have this guy, uh, and they're getting some of the sales. But this guy, you know, comes in at a price point that's in between this. So it's not like the, uh, you know, it's not this cheapo $35. It's not this expensive with a bad photo $70 one. It's a reasonable 
up to spec photo at 54 over time they've built up a review base which is easy to catch up to mind you but you know the listing's probably good they've got ranking and once you have ranking you get sales because you have the ranking and then you get more sales and then you know it's an upward spiral once you rank on page one um so i didn't even know this was a thing uh, i like it because it's an industrial it's obviously undiscovered by private labelers because look at this and uh, i'll give it a two for that reason i think you could come in and take uh 25 percent of this maybe make 2500 a month off this uh make pretty you know yeah uh, you know a competent fba seller could probably do 1500 to 2500 a month which is again not not uh you know won't change your life but it'll um send your kid to school so yeah let me see here and obviously you want you want to look at it's it's important to to look at this and say like how much effort has the seller put into their listing because that's how much by how much you'd have to beat them if you come in and do this so obviously you know a seller that does bullet points that are that short and has two photos is not this isn't their main thing. Uh, they have a day job, as it were. Um, yeah, so that's a good sign, actually. Because uh, eventually, all like in, in you know in ten years, right? All, all Amazon listings are going to be hyper optimized, but not right now. Not right now. Not even close. So, uh, yeah, there, there's no, you know, there's a lot of openings. What on earth? That looks so comfy. What is this? This is some medical apparatus. But it just kind of looks like you're hanging out in the hospital. <sighs> Patient lift. I love it already, man. I love this sort of thing. Because no one competes in these. Oh, man. Ugh. <laughs> Okay, well, obviously, the, okay, the, here's the thing. The, this is a very big uh, apparatus, so you don't necessarily want to sell this. You, you can obviously uh, make a good deal of money per transaction, but not ideal. I would rather sell the sling because, well, let me look at how many of these are actually lifts, okay, because that, that's important. Sling, sling, lift, sling. Let's look at the sling. I'm super excited for the sling, actually. I don't know. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, oh my gosh, guys. Jeez. Okay. All right. This is this is higher, but also you gotta understand this is a this is a, you know, the purchase cycle here is not very high so in a consumer purely consumer like a dog leash or something super consumer super competitive you're gonna have maybe a lot of people buying at a lower price you're gonna have fewer people buying at a higher price it's not the end of the world uh, this is obviously people who need care in their homes or they need care in their you know uh you know they have a caretaker and they need to order one of these or they just got out of the hospital their home they're you know doing physical rehabilitation something like that but this this is this is the best part um so that's actually pretty great and it looks like most people with a good product can waltz in with actually no reviews and do a couple thousand off the bat so there's there's zero and 580 there's five and 14 there's two and 13 it's just you want to see more people doing that than not right uh so i will give this a two it's a it's a it's a you know it's a it's a confident two right it's like a on its way to a one but again you know that you'll know it when you see it and i don't quite feel it with this i started to feel it a little bit a little bit but not quite there you know we're not quite there i'll know i'll know for sure uh um what you another thing to look out for that i haven't mentioned uh, so far in this session is that you'd want to see um multiple sellers having success here so here i see a little bit of repeat which i don't really like so so i see drive medical appearing multiple times they have four uh, five slots, six slots, uh, no, just five there. Yeah, I see patient aid, one, two, three, not ideal. Uh, just for, for the reason that, you know, 
you'd need to do more research, but it's like, well, why is the same seller uh, appearing multiple times? Is it because it's just not that competitive and these are the only guys who have found it? That's possible. The other explanation is, well, you know, uh, there's a legal um, constraint uh, and it's hard for other sellers to enter the market or, or like uh, because these guys are the only ones who have FDA approval or whatever. Uh, so so more more research needed. I don't have time to go into that um, in, for each niche uh, because we're more about finding the good ideas initially and then you have to do your due diligence as well. So, uh, But I'm just giving you fair warning on that. Obviously, obviously you need to do your own work on these if, if and when you decide to pursue them. Um, sit to stand for 4,000 bucks seems like a good deal to stand again uh, I'm also looking at these pill crusher pouches all departments always all departments you guys always all departments you guys all departments you guys pill crusher pouches uh, not, not bad it's pretty darn good, actually. Oh, maybe I'll just I'll look at Pill Crusher because that's I want to do that more. Uh, okay. Wow, that's great! Look at that. Fifteen reviews and seventeen thousand a month. Thirty-two and twelve thousand. That's not good. Uh, that's pretty good. 10,065, 40,093 is pretty great. Okay. I like it. Uh, that, that is a, that is a three because the reviews are a little bit higher than I would like. Um, yeah, that's a little too high. You'd want to see a hundred or 150, right? But, uh, interesting enough to be on the list. Uh, let me look if there's any, okay. Let me look if there's any, uh, I'm going to look at a, a you know, subcategory, right? Because uh, subcategories, maybe people haven't found it yet, or you know, it's underserved. It's just a little bit more obscure, so we have that possibility. I don't like this. Let's see what else you got. Come on, I feel like there's got to be something here that's worthy of a two. I'm not really, I'm, I'm pessimistic about the potential for a one in this particular area but I'm optimistic for a two score a two crushes multiple okay who cares Chris puncher syringe pill crusher syringe not sure what that is actually even and the market is not sure what that is either or whether it is even necessary Pill splitter, this might be the same thing, or it might be a mechanism to divide pills to administer them on different days. Ugh, that's brutally competitive. My gosh, I don't know what we just stepped into. So you're gonna you're gonna do all this and surmount 300 reviews over time for $10 a unit? I don't think so. No thanks. No thank you. Pill pockets, what am I looking at? Get out of here. Pill pockets for cats is strangely specific. Okay, fine. I'll just look at it. I, I'm not really into consumables, let alone consumables for pets. Seems odd. Oh, but maybe I should be more open-minded. This is not bad. Pill pockets for chicken. What? It, what is? What is this? I think it's just because I'm not. Yeah, I gotta have an open mind. I, it's it's all greenies though. I don't don't like that. Um, okay. Let's get out of here. Uh, patient lift. Okay. Uh, I was interested after we were in that area, I wanted to go to rehab, but they said no, no. No. <laughs> um, okay, that was a joke followed by <laughs> 10 seconds of silence. <laughs> okay, uh, all right, let me see. 
Oh, this is just getting weird now. Uh, okay, uh, that's a TV show. Rehab putty. I'm looking for products, you guys. Not, not, uh, not actual rehab. Hasn't gotten that bad over here yet. Canadian winters will, will push me to the brink, but uh, not that far. Um, I think. Okay, well. Man, this, se this seems really overdone. I feel like I'm just going to get a compression brace. Because everyone knows compression braces uh, are, f are full of opportunity still. It's definitely not saturated, and you should definitely do a compression brace. Definitely sell that. No one's doing that at all, and it's never been done before. Did I mention it's never been done? <laughs> Did I mention it's never been done? Um... Okay, rehab pulley system is a little bit more interesting. Um, okay, I'll, I'll take a closer look because um, uh, this alone merits a three and nothing more than that. Urge motion and stretching. Very good. Very good. Have some enhanced brand content. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Oh, this, all this stuff is really boring. Just run of the mill physical stuff. Um. Look at that. Look at that. I think we had these like shock therapy things in, a, in a, another video, if I recall, so I'm not going to do that again. But uh, uh, shock therapy was an interesting one. Nine hole pegboard. Let's see if anyone else in the universe considers that to be a niche or is selling that. They are. Okay. Well, let's see how they do. Ugh, dismal. Well, I mean, I didn't know it was a thing like five seconds ago, so. Yeah, mm, yeah. What about just pegboard? Oh, that's a different thing. Could be, could be good, could be good, guys. Ah, well. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Depends if that's even a, if there's a need for that. Uh, looks, that's not, not, not big enough. Average reviews one. Nice. Pegboard hooks. Okay, well, the revenue to review ratio is decent, especially in this area. This neck of the woods is not bad. Okay, give this a three. This is boring. What are we doing? Looking at nine hole pegboard. Yeah, again, this is an example of a keyword that you'd want to include if you were selling something like this, but it's not the main keyword as evidenced by the low uh, revenues and reviews. Um, yeah, it's not a main keyword. And all the products are different too, so that's how you can sort of tell it's not a thing. Uh, finger twister. Let's waste 10 seconds of our lives, shall we? <laughs> or is it the next fidget spinner? Is, is, is finger twister the next 
Major Spinner. If it is, we are really early to the party. Okay, all right. Let's leave now. Let's go. All right. Finger. Splint, okay. You must be using Alexa and not typing if you're putting in this search query. I bet the average price, yeah, the average price is going to be garbage because it's not like... Uh, this is such a small item, yeah. Okay, one last. Let's do a general search and then look to see who's disproportionately successful here. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. Goniometer? That's not real. I got an O in there. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. Okay, let's look at this. I smell a three. Yep. Well, I mean, it's, no one's heard of this. Like, I, don't, I don't even know what this is. Like a protractor for your body? Who cares? My finger is this one, uh, this <laughs> number of degrees when I bend it. It's like I, I didn't need to know the exact measurement. That's a. Okay, well, anyways. I'm ignorant to the actual use case, so that's why the ridicule, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. On grip measurement strength. You know what? As, lo uh, as long as it's important to someone, enough people, that's all that matters. Are you serious? What is going on? <laughs> oh, this is not bad though. 12,012. Hydraulic hand. Okay, well, if you, yeah, I mean, it seems to be you could carve out your own um, body metrics, uh, body metrics, um, I guess, will come to, actually, that's a two, you know what, that's a two, it's better than goniometer, because, like, uh, great price points, um, you can walk in and make revenue, yeah, you can walk in and make decent enough, right? This measures your grip strength, which at least, unlike the goniometer, I actually get at first blush, like I actually, I actually see uh, what's going on here. Uh, so that's good. I think how we found that is I was in goniometer and then I scrolled down and looked at um, at some other items. Right? Um, And here I'm just, I saw arthritis in the in the bottom there, a uh, uh, product, and then I, I'm just using keyboard recommendations. Because uh, Amazon does something really interesting, because obviously they want you to buy stuff, so, so the stuff at the top, when you type in, when you start typing, is the stuff that's most searched. So it speaks to demand uh, a little bit. Uh, so th that's why uh, the suggestion tends to work out pretty well. Um, arthritis uh, silverware was, is this, that's pretty good. Revenues are a little bit lower than I would like. Um, yeah, I think that's safe to say. I'll give it a three. It's sort of interesting, but not uh, extremely interesting. Any brand dominance? Nope. Decent price point, low review counts, some thousand dollar sellers, but I would like to see these guys push pushing 10,000 with these review counts. That would be amazing. But some of these guys aren't even breaking a thousand, so that's why it's a three. It's kind of interesting, but let me see if there's anything else for people with arthritis that's a little bit more profitable. 
yeah, because no offense or anything, but just, you know, I, I think we could do better than that. Finger arthritis, finger splint. We've already seen the finger splint. I'm a little bit jaded from the last finger splint search, to be honest, but we'll, we'll see what they can do here. Oh, that's way better, actually. Jeez. Is that, mm, hmm. <laughs> is that true? Is that true, though? Like, I, I think this is just a sub a subgenre of the finger splint. Or a, yeah, I don't really like it. Do it if you want. Mm. Uh, still, at the end of the day, an arthritis hand exerciser is still a hand exerciser, so again, pretty pretty competitive. You'd be up against everyone there. Not really liking that. Okay, arthritis, uh, zipper falls, kind of interesting. Might be too small of an area, though. Oh, I love it. Independent living is a great, great keyword. Mm, I guess I guess uh, I guess it would return a lot of books about how to live independently. Great revenues and no reviews on these books though. So I'm just gonna pop that in for you as a as a note, more or less. If you, if you didn't want to write a book on the subject, that's a, a great niche for a book. Cause look at this. Um, but let me see if we can productize this. I was really, you know, I was looking for products, <laughs> but all these seem to be books. Is that all we have? Yeah, that's all we have on page one at least. Independent living product. <laughs> when in doubt, just uh, just ask for it. Uh, toilet aid. It's a polite way of saying it. Okay, let's go there. I had no idea this existed. Okay, I don't even want to know what it's for. Uh, let's see how it sells. Well, that's really, really competitive, actually. Jeez, what's up with that? Oh, I know what it's for now. Okay, all right, fine. Uh, uh, okay, let me see if there are any outliers. That's the 10,092. So is this? Uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, someone, you know, took the time to build a uh, kit of sorts. Sock aid. Is that a whole thing? There seems to be other people doing it. Hip replacement recovery kit, yeah, seems to be a thing. People are bundling things to facilitate independent living, which I think is a, is a great uh, is a great uh, cause. Oh, I like this though. It's pretty good. It's a little bit competitive. I think some people have caught on to this idea, <laughs> become wise to it. But yeah, I think there's a way to merchandise and include things in your kit and do really well. Like this is a 6,003, this is an 8,014, uh, this is an 1,811, 6.6 .6 and 63 for one thing, one leg strap. Yeah, okay, all right. Give it a three. Um... Right on the nose. Oof, all right, that's more competitive than I thought. And then the market just drops off in the last three-fourths of the page. <laughs> perfect. Caretaker gifts, what on earth? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Let's look for an outlier here. Not super. Uh, the other thing that we haven't touched on in this session, at least, <laughs> seasonality. I don't know. Some some places in America can have pools year round, but not everywhere. So just be aware that part of your market segment is going to leave for a little bit uh, during the year, and be prepared for that. Perhaps round out your product portfolio with different things that aren't uh, seasonally affected. Obviously, seasonally, when it's good, it's good, and when it's bad, it's bad. And uh, you know, some markets are more uh, uh, consistent. I'm going to go to the storefront here. Yeah, they, they have a good amount of stuff I can see from their feedback. I'm going to see what's selling best for them, and then let's just do that. They've done the hard work already. Mm. Oh, so it looks like we found the one that was the best mix of um, revenue reviews. So let's just see if this is the exception or the rule where this one comes from. Oh my gosh, let's, let's play spot the keyword. Pool cleaner, hose ball, hose. Uh, oh my gosh, screw this. <laughs> hose ball bearing swivel connector. Mm, seems a little long. Let's look at suggested products to see if we can find a, what the keyword is. My goodness, I think I'm, yeah. That kind of looks like it. I think I just go partially blind when I'm just looking at mechanical parts and things. Like I, I just haven't seen them before, and it's really hard to differentiate them visually or something like that. Does it? Does that happen to you? Anyway, with that said, okay, but no, I can't give up on this. I will find the main keyword. I have a particular set of skills. Multi game table, ah, that just looks like more fun than pool accessories, and it's, uh, it's just what it is. Ooh, ball bearing. Is that it? I think we might have found it just now. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, finally. Oh my gosh. But yeah, this is clearly the best one. So this is actually the exception and not the rule in this uh, niche, which is uh, disappointing. Let's see what else they've got. I want to see if we're missing anything. Because uh, effectively, they've gone through a trial and error process on our behalf. Uh, they've tested the market. They've put out a bunch of pool-specific products. They obviously specialize in this area and now we can benefit from the fruits of their labor uh, the months and years of trial and error uh, just pluck out a niche that's already working and then beat them at their own game with optimization uh, product giveaways and other FBA related tactics uh, which obviously work and especially if this isn't their full-time thing they won't uh, see what was coming but it doesn't really seem like there's there's a whole lot of uh, whole lot of openings there, or it just doesn't seem like anything that we'd want to jump at necessarily. Plus, these are replacement parts for a specific uh, looks like type of pool or type. You know, they're built around fitting certain things. Like that's why I don't like those fridge water filters and stuff. Because if the main manufacturer changes the thing, then your product automatically has to change. You know, you have to start all over again. It's kind of not ideal. 
Uh, I'll do a chlorine feeder. I'll do a little chlorine feeder now and then. If this doesn't work, we're out of here. Into something more interesting. Yeah, it's too competitive. It's more reviews than I would like. And the market drops off. Second half, so. Yep. Okay. Multi-game table. It's, it's just so much easier to look at than the pool supplies. Like, I just... I just go blind to the pool supplies. Something like this is easily understood. That's a cool photo, too. Wow. Uh... There's some stuff in here, but I like 3D chess better. Uh, is this a Star Trek? Yeah, I actually saw this in store. It looks pretty cool. I don't know how to play it, though. Uh, my chess 3D. It's funny. Uh, okay. Not bad. Uh, yeah, how, how, you know, you'll be making, even if you sell one, you know, one set a day, it's uh, pretty good. Uh, these guys are selling, on average, 123, but like, uh, yeah, probably uh, most people less than that. So yeah, if you sell one a day, that's not a bad business. You can, uh, three man chess. <laughs> Review counts are reasonable, but not not great. We have time. Okay. That would be the editing software. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to call this one a day for now. And uh, thank you for watching. And again, um, I'm coming out with a tool that will give you uh, a rating out of 100 uh, percent for any given product idea. It's uh, way more thorough than what I'm doing here. And you just with one click, you can get a full assessment, a full diagnostic of any product idea that you want. Uh, so that's going to be really cool. I'm really excited for it. Um, sign up in the link in the description uh, right now to get notified early bird style of when that comes out, because that's going to be super cool. And uh, yeah, leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.